Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm out at a really beautiful spot out in the middle of the woods. Uh, we're out near Pinery Provincial Park at a development site. I won't say exactly where it is just to protect the, the property owner's privacy. Uh, but I wanted to show you uh, well, basically what I do for a living. Um, I work for Return the Landscape full time. It's a plant rescue and restoration program. And one of the main things we do is look for developments that are going to happen in natural areas. And then we come in and dig out native plants, uh, take them to either schoolyards or city parks and put them in areas that aren't being used. So I was just going to walk around today and show you some of the plants and shrubs that are in here. Uh, so right here is uh, witch hazel. It's a uh, native shrub. And as you can see, it flowers in the fall. And here down at the ground, you can see a big thicket of blueberry. That's low sweet blueberry. And here's another understory shrub. It's maple leaf verburnum. And here's a bracken fern. And here's a nice uh, winter green. You can see all the berries on it here. And you can actually eat these berries or the leaf. And here is some fragrant sumac. You can see it's a beautiful area. Like right next to the pinery here, people actually spend money to go camping and to go hiking in these areas. So what we're really trying to promote is that people stick with a minimal footprint when they develop and keep as much natural space as they can. So we've been digging for about a half hour and you can see we got a, a good amount in the truck already here. Oh, here's another really cool species. This is ground cedar. It's actually as big as it gets. It's a nice little ground cover. So I should also mention that uh, it's a bad idea to ever go out in the woods and dig stuff from the wild. As soon as you disturb the soil, then it starts allowing all the native, or sorry, the invasive species to move in. So we always wait until this happens, till the lot actually sells and they get all their approvals and it's about to be bulldozed, then we come in. So hopefully you can see the importance of the Return the Landscape program, uh, both for trying to keep to minimal footprints and encouraging people to, to leave some natural space remaining on their properties. Uh, if you ever look at a satellite image of, uh, I was going to say Lambton County, but anywhere on the planet now, you'll see that it's all divided up into grids. So pretty much all of our land is owned by somebody for something, agriculture, residential, industrial, and nobody seems to think that, that they have an obligation to, to leave natural space. Uh, it's kind of a concept that's been lost over time. But uh, by encouraging people to leave some areas, that'll keep some habitat around. We won't keep losing our uh, species of plants and animals, and we won't have to worry about um, the problems with species at risk. Uh, for developers, it's becoming more and more of an issue. Uh, they talk about uh, removing the red tape, but uh, there's going to be more and more red tape coming up if people don't start considering this. If there's nowhere for these species to live, they're becoming more rare, and the more rare they are, the less development we can do. So this is the business side of me talking. I don't know how it doesn't make anything but perfect sense to start creating more natural space so that we have more freedom in the future to develop. Because right now we're painting ourselves into a corner and it's just going to be tougher and tougher to develop in the future. There's going to be more delays, more costs, and more people uh, being upset about it. 